We are back. I missed uploads yesterday. I've been so obsessed with Pokemon TCG Pocket that I have just not been locked in this week. Um, I'm going to be doing some videos about that as like YouTube shorts on the main channel. But as far as this game goes, as far as the game that I play for a living, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about how strong coaching is in the current metagame, as well as some common coaching targets in one less common coaching target that I think is actually really funny. So that's going to be the, that, that's just what we're going to talk about today. Uh, if you guys enjoy this point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Gamersups ad here. This channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. And let's begin. Okay, so coaching is a very powerful move. It is a move that a lot of Pokemon get, mostly fighting types, but you're basically limited to running it on faster Pokemon, mainly because it's basically a side targeted bulk up. That's the best way to think about it. So. As far as your fast coaching users go, your top three are Sneasler, Cinderace, and Halucha. And while Cinderace isn't a bad coaching target, you certainly get more value out of most of the other Pokemon, so I don't think it's terribly worth mentioning in this discussion. Uh, but other coaching targets that are notable, of course, uh, we have, well, I guess I could have talked about Lilligan, but Lilligan's very specific, uh, Annihilate and Blaziken. It's really funny that Blaziken's in any kind of discussion, but yeah, Blaziken's actually a really solid coaching user that we've seen do well at uh, previous tournaments this format. But I'm going to talk about the three coaching mons that are super common right now and what value they each bring to the table as well as some coaching targets. So Annihilate is currently one of my favorite coaching mons because it does have mind games with it, especially in um, closed team sheet, but in open team sheet, it has arguably just as many mind games because they have to cover for the final gambit play. Basically, Annihilate as a, as a uh, ghost type and a fighting type is gonna be able to be immune to fake out. So you have effectively a guaranteed coaching turn one with the choice scarf. Its main drawback is that you have to run the choice scarf on it to get like the most value out of it. Um, but in a lot of scenarios, Annihilate will end up being targeted by like a sucker punch or a grassy glide or uh, they might even like protect and switch in a ghost type on what they think is about to be a final gambit because mind you final gambit is a move that can one shot anything with lower HP than annihilate if it if it's at full HP uh, and with the choice scarf you're outspeeding basically everything so they have to be very careful with that it is it is not a fun thing to do so coaching is kind of safe you're able to coaching into your partner pokemon that partner pokemon could be something like a king gambit which could then go for like a swords dance and then turn one you have plus three attack plus one defense and it is very scary so that is really nice uh, on top of this annihilate is able to just remove certain pokemon from play like i said literally anything with lower hp stat than it that list of pokemon is quite high as you can see any pokemon from here and below gets one shot by Annihilate. We're talking important Pokemon like Excadrill, uh, Garchomp. Uh, what else is here that's like super important? I guess you could argue that like Garganical is like a really nice one to be able to one shot. That's a wall of a Pokemon. Rillaboom, Palafin, Tyranitar, Corviknight, Arcanine, Hisui, Gyarados. Well, Gyarados isn't a thing, but like Grimmsnarl. Like most of the annoying Pokemon in the metagame. Dragonite's another big one since it runs like um, multi-scale. That actually bypasses multi-scale because the damage isn't halved. It's just, it's just actually, is that, does multi-scale work versus this? I'm going to look it up. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Okay, unconfirmed. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, uh, but who knows? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I don't, I don't know the mechanics of multi-scale other than the damage gets halved. I think the power of the move might be what get halved or what gets halved. So if it's like a flat damage amount. Pretty sure it's still KOs, but let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. But that's a small little detail. Point is, Annihilate is a very scary mod on lead. Uh, on top of uh, being able to run Vital Spirit if you really want to be immune to like Sleep Powder or Spore from Amoongus, you can run Defiant as well, making it so if you get Intimidate boosted, um, your close combat's going to chunk them as though you're like Choice Banded, even though you don't have a lot of attack investment. Um, 115 attack at plus one is still hitting very, very hard, so you're going to be able to secure some solid damage that. So basically, Annihilate sort of sacrifices uh, initial damage for 
uh, being able to threaten like 50 50s on lead being able to be completely immune to fake out and also just being like a very solid pokemon overall especially if you drop a u-turn you can actually run um i like running rage fist on mine because with max hp you're gonna be able to take like a couple of stray hits like a couple of heat waves a couple of rock slides and at some point your rage fist becomes like you know if you eat two hits you have 150 base power rage fist even with no investment that's still very strong and very good for the late game so yeah sneezer on the other hand is Probably the best coaching mon we have in the format at the moment, uh, and that is in no small part due to Dire Claw. So Dire Claw, we all know how it works. 80 base power, physical attack, 100 accuracy, 24 PP, 50% chance to sleep, poison, or paralyze the target. That is the most broken move I have seen in a very long time. Um, so in the same way that Annihilate makes mind games with Final Gambit, Sneezer makes mind games with, am I going to sleep this turn? <laughs> But uh, one advantage that Sneezer has over Annihilate is the fact that Sneezer uh, is going to be able to get the benefits of uh, a speed boost from its ability Unburden without having to lock into an item like a Choice Scarf. And there are multiple ways you can activate this. I like Focus Sash, but another one that's been quite common recently is White Herb, since you're going to be able to uh, ignore an attack drop from Incineroar and then get the speed boost. You can also activate yourself with Close Combat, or another one is, of course, going to be like items like Grassy Seed or Psychic Seed. Uh, which will allow you to get a defensive boost on either the special or physical side, double your speed, and then, you know, not only eat hits much better, but be able to go for, like, coaching as your partner and spam Dire Claw. Um, another thing that this guy has that's, like, really nice is Jolly Sneasler is outspeeding a lot of important Pokemon in this metagame. Um, and, like, the fact that Focus Sash Sneasler once Unburden activates, is able to outspeed Pokemon even with Tailwind and be able to go for like those Dark Claws is very scary. But coaching is of course one of its best uh, options here because a lot of Pokemon want to protect in front of Sneezer. If you're running that Focus Sash, it's very safe to go for coaching into partner Pokemon like Dragonite or Baxcalibur. And defensively speaking, a Poison type um, is very solid next to Dragon types that want to have coaching. Uh, because you're going to be able to cover for fairy type Pokemon. So Dragonite really loves it next to it. Vexcalibur really loves it next to it. Garchomp loves it next to it. And Tyranitar also really loves uh, Sneezer next to it uh, because it's going to be able to deal with opposing Rillaboom, which is a very rough matchup for Titar if it doesn't have Tear on the field. And of course, getting defense boosts on Titar is going to make it a menace to deal with. So that's another that's another big thing it's got going for it. And yeah, Sneezer is by far the most common coaching Pokemon in the metagame. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure coaching is a little more common than fake out at this point. Final Pokemon that I want to mention for this video is Blaziken, and this one's sort of like a dark horse of a pick. It it, it appears here and there, right? But it's not like the most common Pokemon ever. Uh, they either run like Terra Ghost or Terra Stellar, but Blaziken is a very interesting pick in that it isn't initially very fast, but after a single Protect, Speed Boost makes it basically the fastest Pokemon in the format. Um... 80 with the timid nature at plus one that's very strong uh it's also a very solid fighting type into pokemon like king gambit because it doesn't have to go for close combat and lower its defenses i've seen uh, an uptick in of more special blaziken sets that like to run like either heat wave or overheat alongside aura sphere because aura sphere is a very solid move it doesn't check accuracy it's very good into like pokemon like muck smeargle uh which are evasion boosting <laughs> or evasion boosting strats uh but yeah blaziken is also like super super offensively uh dangerous because if you end up going for the physical set close combat and flare blitz are super scary and a lot of people run focus sash with flare blitz even though it's like you know you're gonna break your own focus sash but it's still like super worth it because you want the burst damage and it's much better than blaze kick which mind you is only 85 base power and can miss which is really dumb but yeah uh, being able to go for Protect on turn one next to Pokemon like Dragapult and then go for Coaching on the following turn is really nice. Or at the very least, you can go for uh, Dragon Darts, you know, turn one with Dragapult, get solid damage, go for Coaching. Now it has a defense boost and then you speed, or now it has a defense and attack boost. Then you speed boost past the Dragapult and now the Coaching goes first. So effectively, you've given it plus two in what would have been one turn. Um, one turn's worth of time, you know, because like, it's at, at first, Blaziken goes second, then it goes first. That's like kind of a cool little thing it can do. Um, and yeah, Blaziken is just like a really solid Pokemon overall. Uh, fire types are in high demand in this, at this point in the format, mainly because like the only relevant fire types you really see at this point are Magmar, which is like a support Pokemon, Incineroar, which is support Pokemon, and Volcarona, which takes a lot of time to get set up. 
um, to deal the heavy damage that I can. Like two Quiver Dances minimum, I think. I guess one Quiver Dance is fine. But um, Volcarona is also more known for its supportive role with Rage Powder and stuff. So being able to be like a, a roll compression mon where it's like not only supportive, but also dealing pretty significant damage with like your offensive stabs is really, really cool. And Firefighting is actually a pretty solid typing considering you get the benefits of being a fighting type without having to deal with the drawback of uh, being weak to fairies, which Annihilate does and Sneezer, you know, it, it doesn't really because it's also a poison type, but Sneezer, um, not like the bulkiest Pokemon, 80-80, Blaziken, I guess it's less bulky, but the physical side, you know, it's a little bulkier. <laughs> it hits, um, it doesn't hit quite as hard as Sneezer, but that speed boost also is really nice into opposing Sneezer since you're going to be able to uh, protect and then like even after they're unburdened, you'll be able to KO them. So as far as coaching Pokemon, these are the big three. Of course, there are other ones. Like I said, if you really want to get creative, Lilligant, Mian Xiao, um, Heracross, if you really want to. Uh, but at this point, you're getting kind of like in the weeds. I would say Cinderace is like fourth place for me. If I had to choose another one, it'd be Cinderace, since it has the niche of being a coaching Pokemon without having a, the fighting type on it, uh, which will allow it to deal better into fairy types than other Pokemon. So yeah. All right. So those are the three coaching. As far as coaching targets, this is my list of the best coaching targets, which you might notice is basically just pseudo legendaries plus P2 and Rillaboom. And I call King Gambit a pseudo. I don't care if you don't think King Gambit's a pseudo. They built this guy like a pseudo legendary. Like they literally, if they gave it more speed, it'd be too strong. Like the fact that they lowered its speed stat made it, made it like what it needed to be. <laughs> But yeah, did you know King Gambit only has 550 BST? That's crazy. It's 50 points off. Imagine if they gave it 100 speed. Ooh, broken. All right. But yeah, uh, King Gambit is a phenomenal coaching partner because it has Defiant. Uh, it's going to make it so you can't really lower its stats, as well as the fact that it has a number of very powerful sets. I like Safety Goggles Terra Flying at the moment. I think that's super good in like Garchomp sets. You're also able to go for Swords Dance and then run like just your, your Double Dark spread or your Double Dark moveset. Uh, it's good in like Amoongus and stuff since you can't be redirected or put to sleep and that's super nice But also you have like the black glasses set basically any kind of eyewear works well on King Gambit and then you go for like Terra Dark and This is actually a really scary set because I have faced off into Annihilate plus coaching black glasses King Gambit um, And as soon as they go for that Terra Dark and a coaching um, that close combat kind of bounces off of him You forget that this guy has a hundred HP and 120 defense and if they're built like this if they're built like this, yeah, things start to bounce off that mod. Let me actually run that calc for you real quick. So if you're a King Gambit and you're just like black glasses, let's do like four defense, right? Four defense and you tear a dark and you're plus one, plus one. Let's say you're facing off against like any random fighting type. Let's go with Sneasler. Let's go with Sneasler, right? You're the Terra flying adamant, right? So close combat is only a roll to KO you with Adamant Sneezer. If they're jolly, they straight up do not KO you. Um, well, most of the time, you know, 85 to 101. But yeah, uh, plus, oh, that isn't even plus one defense. That's just like base here. Plus one defense, 67%. I was going to say, that doesn't sound right. And even with Adamant, most combat's only doing 75%. So if you manage to go for like protect turn one, coaching, protect, uh, and then like Swords Dance turn two, coaching, you're at plus two defense and then plus three attack. Or plus four attack because you sort of dance turn two. Now your sucker punch is like threatening a one shot on Sneezer, which actually resists your hit. So like that Pokemon is terrifying. Uh, Dragonite is a really cool coaching partner because multi scale and scale shot have good synergy in that uh, you're able to go for that scale shot and lower your defense stat, but multi scale will kind of save you uh, with that. But also you have inner focus. So you can't be intimidated if you really want to do that. Uh, Dragonite is cool because it will get the coaching boost and you'll end up with plus one attack, plus one defense. And then after you scale shot, you'll be at plus one speed and neutral defense. So it's sort of like a weird roundabout way of doing dragon dance and attacking at the same time. And with loaded dice, this Pokemon becomes like a, a whole menace. Like loaded dice Dragonite is able to do a very important thing. And that's uh, one shot opposing Sneasler with scale shot and not activate their Focus Ash Unburden. Like you just bypass it since it's a multi-hit move. Beyond that, you have really important moves like Stomping Tantrum. You can run Terra Blast, Terra Flying. Uh, low Kick's also really good on it. So like there are a couple of moves you can run there. Max Caliber is another one that I've grown fond of. It's very similar to Dragonite in that it wants to go for Scale Shot, but it also has access to Icicle Spear, which gives it a much better matchup into opposing, um, into opposing Rillaboom since you don't have to worry about uh, 
Rillaboom. Or since you don't have to, you don't have to worry about like conserving your like Terra Flying Terra Blast to actually hit the Rillaboom for solid damage. So that's a thing. Um, Bax Calibur also is able to Sword Dance on its own if it really wants to. And then like the last move is either going to be like Swords Dance and Protect or like Protect and Ice Shard. I like Ice Shard at the moment, uh, but being able to run this guy with like loaded dice is super scary. You know, your scale shot is going to give you the speed boost. And beyond that, uh, Dragonite doesn't really run Jolly. It runs Adamant Max Speed at the moment since it can run, uh, it can outrun like Dragon Ball with that. But Bax Calibur is able to actually speed creep that. You can go like 133 speed or 134, still run your max attack and still have like solid bulk. So yeah. Tyranitar recently won a regional. I don't have to explain too much about it, but Assault Vest, Terra Flying with like your standard four moves, Rock Slide, uh, Knock Off, Low Kick, Terra Blast. Like you're going to get a lot of value out of this guy. He has 100 HP and 110 defense. Of course, coaching on that Mon is going to be busted. Garchomp is a phenomenal coaching Mon, uh, basically because it can do a few things. Uh, you're either running like Life Orb or Clear Aim at the moment. Sometimes I run like Choice Band, but Jolly Garchomp hits such a solid speed tier uh, while also having like a really good ability in either Sandvale or Roughskin that you're going to be able to, you know, hit a lot of things super hard. Stomping Tantrum, uh, Dragon Claw, Dragon Claw, and Protect. Your last move is usually Earthquake. And the main thing about this is that if you're running Earthquake on this Mon, usually your coaching Mon is going to want to be Terra Flying because it's going to allow you to go for coaching into the Garchomp without act or without um, having to hit your own Pokemon with Earthquake. So that's really nice. Terra Steel or Terra Ground is solid on both these guys and or on this guy. But um, Garchomp is just a very good Mon in this format for that reason. Bolt, not the most common Pokemon anymore, but still absurdly strong. Adamant Dragapult with uh, Terra Dragon Dragon Darts is super, super powerful. Clear Body plus Choice Band makes it so like it's consistently hitting for absurd damage. The smart targeting on Dragon Darts is really stupid. Um, since if a Pokemon protects, it's going to both darts will go into the other one. But you also have like really strong options like Phantom Force, U-Turn, uh, and of course Outrage if you really need to nuke something. Uh, I would say that like Unburdened Sneezer is really strong next to this guy, or even the Scarf uh, Annihilate is really good get next to this guy because you're able to outspeed the Pokemon, go for that, uh, <laughs> go for that coaching choice man Dragon Darts, and just pick up solid KOs. Rillaboom is really cool as well because it synergizes super well with Sneasler, but it also synergizes with all of them, basically. Uh, it's able to go for Fake Out, so you get the free coaching. Uh, and then from that point on, you get like the second coaching and you have like Grassy Glide, Wood Hammer, High Horsepower. Uh, it's just like a really solid mod. Of course, Grassy Surge is a phenomenal ability and Assault Vest will allow you to take hits a lot easier. The main issue with this guy is that he doesn't like dealing with the number one Intimidator in the format, which is of course going to be Incineroar. But the benefit of having, you know, a fighting type next to you means that Incineroar isn't actually that big of an issue. Porygon 2 is my last one. Porygon 2 is an interesting coaching target. And the reason it's interesting is because Porygon 2 is in the very, very special situation that download sometimes increases your attack stat sometimes download would increase will increase your attack stat and because of that some people will invest a little bit of attack investment into porygon 2 to hit certain benchmarks right like they'll go like super defensive with the porygon 2 or whatever and like still go with like quiet nature but because your quiet nature is zero speed um you're not decreasing your attack at all so you can actually run like max attack investment you don't take much from uh foul play you have access to recover Trick Room as like your two, like you're always running these moves. And then Terra Blast as your main stab and like Ice Beam as your coverage. And then Eviolite, right? So the thing about this is Terra Blast, when you're Terrastalized, it will become a physical attack if your attack stat is greater than your special attack stat. So as you can see here, what you can actually do is make it so you get the, the better one in any situation um, by calculating it such that uh, your attack stat will pass your special attack stat at plus one. Like, that's really cool. Um, and usually you see things like Terra Poison or Terra Flying with this because you're actually able to bypass the Assault Vest on Rillaboom and get some beneficial calcs like that. So, like, let's say that you're using a Porygon 2, right? And Porygon 2 is mixed offense download. You can see that um, if you're at plus one... Let me get rid of download so it stops giving it that. Uh, do We'll go Chlorophyll, whatever. As you can see, if you're at plus one and you terastalize into, let's go with like a normal type. Let's go like slacking. Why not? Just a regular normal type. You can see that you're, I guess slacking isn't a good example. Um, Arcanine, I have to like build like a fake Pokemon real quick. Arcanine with no Intimidate 
and it's like a normal type now. There we go. All right. As you can see now, your Terra Blast is actually stronger than your Ice Beam. And if you're not Terrastalized, it's weaker because it's using your special attack stat. But because sometimes Porygon 2 will get this attack boost, coaching into it actually isn't a bad idea becomes, it, uh, because it becomes extremely difficult to knock out. So now you end up at like plus two attack, plus one defense. And now like moves like Flare Blitz are bouncing off you. If we go like to Sneasler, right? If we go into like Terra Flying, Adam and Sneasler, that close combat um, without the Terra is only doing like 50 to 59 percent to you with adamant and if they're jolly it's going to do even less obviously it's going to be 44 to 54 so they have a 45 percent chance to two it ko you but it's likely that they're not going to two it ko you because of that uh and if you go for the terrestrialization you know you turn into a poison type your terror blast hits pretty hard but this also works for flying type as well so now your flying type uh terror blast is going to hit pretty hard so basically you always have with like porygon 2 an option to go physical if they end up if the opponent's like defenses make it so you end up with a attack stat instead of a special attack uh, boost from the download. So that's a cool thing you can do. It happens here and there. Sometimes it just ends up being like the play that you want to go for. And yeah, no, coaching P2 is like a real thing. Uh, we actually had like physical P2 win a GC back in generation eight with um, it running, I think Giga Impact as its fourth move uh, to sort of surprise people off of Dynamax stuff. So yeah. This is just a quick video talking about coaching bonds in the format and, you know, the three that are like really solid as well as a few Pokemon that do well with it. Of course, there are other strats you can run. I've seen coaching in a Dondozo as well. But yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Let me know what I should talk about next and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.